Oh, fail. What is he doing in there? He's trying to impress someone. Well, I hope she's worth it. It's a he. He's a writer called Mel Hutchwright. Oh, never heard of him. Mm. Well, he wrote a book called Hard Grinding. <laughs> the story of my life. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about the rigours and hardship of Lancashire life in the 19th century. Uh, well, you tell this fellow, if he wants to write about suffering, come round to our house for tea tonight. <laughs> I'll see you, Jack. Oh, I'll love to see you. Norris, come out of there before you do yourself a mischief. If you haven't Five found it... hundred pages of top-grade cotton watermarked paper. The parchment of kings for a prince among writers. <laughs> well, I hope your prince doesn't turn out to be a pauper. That paper's expensive. Oh, no, no, it's a gift, Rita, from a, a fledgling writer to a master. They're coming oh. out your wages, then. Oh, imagine the, the words, the intellectual soarings that are going to appear on these very pages, the, the majesty of the language. I mean, words torn from the very... so. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Rita. I, I know, and I, I know what I sound like, but, but, but it's not every day you meet a kindred spirit. <clears throat> I have to go out. But you've only just got back from lunch. What time shall I say you'll be back? What time do you want me back? Well, it helps to know these things. Who? Well, I am your PA, in case you haven't noticed. Well, as long as that's the only reason. I'd hate to think that anyone came between us. There isn't any us. Now, where can I say you are? I have to see a man about a dog. Gemma's got it into her head she wants a pet. Justine's meeting me, in case you're interested. You know, poacher turned gamekeeper isn't all it's cracked up to be, Sally. Same hours, same money, less fun. That garden could do with a bit of work. Yeah. We could make a start on it tomorrow. If you want. You never know. You might have green fingers. So what do you want for your tea? I'm not hungry. Listen, son. You haven't eaten all day. Look, I know my way around a chip I said shop. I'm not hungry. Look, Craig. And I don't want to talk. Well, what do you want? Stupid question. Look, uh, I'm only trying to help. Well, you can't. No one can. I know you mean well, but that's just how it is. What the hell are you doing here? So soon. Mm. Skyping off work, are we? Mm. Nipping off early to a rendezvous with a bit of fluff you got tucked away. Surely I was doing no such thing. I, I, I wouldn't uh, dream of such an impropriety. I'll keep your britches on. I'm only joshing. Mm. Oh, yes, 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 of course. So there's nothing wrong with the occasional romp. Mm. Keeps the old cogs greased, if you know what I mean. Remember, a woman is the chalice of a man's creativity. Speaking of which, I feel the clarion call of inspiration. Oh, you, you, you've been needing this, then? Mm. Look, it, it, it's, it's the best we have. Uh, here, open it, feel the quality. Oh, no, I'm sure it's just fine, only I'm a bit short of money. Oh, no, no, please, please. It, mm. it, it, it's a gift. It's my meagre contribution to the Canary's last song. Well, as a rule, I find such bourgeois extravagance an anathema, but since it's you, my friend, I accept. Oh. I'm a simple man. The first thing I ever wrote was on butcher's paper. I would scratch in the dirt with my fingers if needs be. My words would still find their voice. Oh, I, I, I was wondering if, if you had a moment, if you could help me find my voice. I mean, you, you, you did say you, you might be able to give me a tip or two, you know. A little nugget of wisdom, perhaps? Oh, the gold of knowledge. 
to comprehend its sublime luster. A man cannot just be offered such a thing, Norris. You must search for it in the seam of your soul. Mel, Mel, you you, you you forgot your paper. What on earth are you doing? Oh, panning for gold, if you must know. <laughs> oh, well, when you've finished, you can help me unpack this shopping. Stop torturing yourself, Liz. I can't help it. Once you've tasted paradise. You'll get over it, pal. Get over what? You've been on holiday. Shit. No, no, it, it, it weren't a holiday. It was a life-changing experience. Tell her, son. She'll never understand. Hey, the nearest you'll get to a life-changing experience is clean kecks once a week. What's wrong with your face? That's right with it. It's tanning cream. I almost killed myself getting some colour. I'm not letting it go without a fight. Oh, yeah, I thought you said you were working all the time. Flipping heck, Mum. What happened to you? It's fake, Tam. Hey, join the war. Women use gravy. I saw it on telly. What's for tea? Uh, Fizz and Kirk will have to sort you out. Me and Les need some quality time alone. Hey, hey, you're not dumping him on us. Too right. We're still jet-lagged. You went to Spain? I wish I was still living with Uncle Roy and Auntie Ella. You don't mean that, love. They were never trying to get rid of me. And the food with tops. Ailey makes the best chip butties in the whole world. She puts red and brown sauce on them and then cuts them into triangles. I really miss them. If those croppers think they can buy my son's affections with a butter, they've got another thing coming. They didn't buy his affection, they just took care of him. Brainwashed him, more like. Where's that posh menu you filched from that restaurant? Well, what are you going to do? If we can't be in Spain, then Spain is coming here. I know cigar smoke when I smell it. Keep your voice down. He's working in there. He's smoking. He's not smoking. He's writing in character. I fail to see the difference. Well, with all due respect, Emily, that's because you're not of an artistic disposition. Uh, you've heard of method actors? I can't say I have. Well, no matter. See, Mel's a method writer. At this moment, is most likely in the power-crazed mind of the pit owner. I've never heard such nonsense. Jilly Cooper writes about horses. <laughs> She doesn't do it whilst riding side saddle. You can't compare a hack like her to a literary genius like Mel Hutch, right? Genius or not, I have certain rules, and one of them is no smoking. Evening calls. <laughs> is there a problem? No, 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 not at all. Mr. Hutch, right? Call me Mel. It's about your smoking. Won't you join me for a drink? Well, it... It's a bit early. Oh, nonsense. Ernest Hemingway once said to me, it's never too early or late to libate. You knew Mr Hemingway? Ernie and me. Oh. Now, that drink. Oh, we, 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 we'd love to. Oh, uh, Norris, you can do me a favour and, and locate certain items. Uh, For creative purposes, you understand? Oh, yes, 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 of course. Beautify yourself, Emily, and escort me to the pub. I require a muse. Huh. It's funny how things work out. I was supposed to be visiting her a, a few months ago, but I made some excuse to hand about having a touch of cold, but in truth, I couldn't face Tommy. I never could abide the man, if I were honest. But something my little girl said, which keeps coming back to me, she told me, don't worry, Dad, we'll always be here. How's Craig bearing up? 
don't really know, to be honest. <laughs> He's not talking to me. Oh, well, give him time, eh? He does need you, you know. He needs his mother. I never thought a grandson of mine would be wearing nail varnish. Oh. <laughs> Still, whatever takes his fancy, I suppose. <laughs> He'll grow out of it. <laughs> it's the music I'm worried about. Look, I'm sure there's no harm in that. I hope so. I'm scared I'm starting to like it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, hello, Audrey. Hello, Emily. Uh, this is oh, Keith. We've met. How are you, Keith? Emily brought me a lovely shepherd's pie. Oh! Best I've had in ages. Mel had tried at your service. Uh, why don't you join us? Don't mind if we do. Huh? Hello. Well, um, I'll get the drinks, shall I? Marvellous. You didn't have to wait for me. I wasn't waiting. I was working. This place doesn't run itself, you know. I'm still the boss, Anna. It was a joke, Sal. Come on, give us a break. So did you find a dog you liked? Lots. Only trouble was, we couldn't find one that liked Justine. I think the dog's had an allergy to her or something. I could have hung a pork shop round her neck. It wouldn't have made any difference. <laughs> that is not funny. Hey, I haven't seen one of those for a while. I've left some contracts for you to sign. Stay for a drink. I'm sorry, I can't. Yes, you can. Ian, please, don't do this. Look, I know things have changed between us, but we've still got to go on working together, haven't we? That's the only reason I'm here. I know. One drink. That's all. That's all I want. You've burnt the sausages. They're not burnt. They're well done. It's lumpy. I know someone will be lumpy in a second. What's wrong with you? I'm not hungry. I don't know why I bother. Nobody made you cook for us. Oh, I didn't see you offer. Yeah, right. My mum should be here. Yeah, well, she's not. I am here, so get it at. Don't you think you should ring her? I'll do it then. Sit down. If your mum's at work, it's for a good reason. What reason? That's the reason. The food on your plate, the clothes on your back. Thanks, Dad. Real nice. Glad someone appreciates us. How's the wine? Nice. Ought to be. Fifteen pound a bottle. Oh. <laughs> so that's where all the profits are going. I like to think of it as profit sharing. What's wrong? Do I smell a dog? Well? You stink. That's what I like about you, Sally. Always honest. And sensible. I asked Justine, you know. Asked her what? Oh, I think we both know what. She denied it, of course. Oh, Ian. Stool pigeon isn't part of your job description. No, and neither is this. Oh, I don't mind. Actually, I think it's great. What? Your wife wants me to spy on you and think it's great? That's sick. It's perfect. It means she doesn't suspect anything about us. I've already said. There isn't an us. Oh, but there could be. I don't care about the risk anymore. Well, I do. Justine found out about Lisa. Oh, Lisa was nothing. A consolation prize. You are everything. I have to go. No, but that's just it. You don't. You don't have to leave ever again. I don't understand. I want to be with you. And I don't care what it takes. There's my son. You're an artist. <laughs> oh, hey, get that down your neck. What is it? Sangria. <laughs> the national drink of Spain. Bowley. Oh, 
Oh, it tastes like rubbish wine, that. Two ninety nine that cost. Deb's finest is that. I still don't taste them much. Yeah, well, that's because he had no lemons or oranges, did I? So it's just red wine? Just drink it, will you? What's Mum making? Hey, it's a surprise. Hey! <sighs> you could have at least made an effort. Is that what you call it? I'm trying to do something nice for our Chesney. You shouldn't have come home, then. So, what are you cooking? Tortilla. What's the ingredients? Eggs, onions, potatoes, garlic and tomatoes. Sounds a bit difficult to me. It's Spanish omelette. How hard can it be? Flipping impossible with no food in the house. <sighs> Why the hell didn't you say before? Because you spent two hours trying to get into that coffee. Hey, hey! A viva les Spania. You get it? <laughs> Who fancy the drop? How much money have you got? No, I spent it all on this. When's it ready? I'm starving. <sighs> what about a nice chip butty, eh? <laughs> I'll cut it into triangles. I hate it here. Oh, you can feel it in your marrow. Uh, what, what are we supposed to be feeling? The beauty of an evening when the sun, like the working man, finds his rest. Oh, I've never thought of it like that. Well, that surprises me, Audrey. I sense the poet in you. Ah, the critic returns after another day lambasting the poor and artistic. We're enjoying the evening. <laughs> I do believe it's wasted on the likes of Ken. I prefer the morning myself. Personally, I can't see it compares. Now in the palace of the West, sinking to slumber of the bright day, like a tired monarch fanned to rest. Oh, do you know, that's wonderful. Did you write that yourself, Mel? No, Thomas More did. It's from The Summer Fate. Spoken like an autodidact. Where did you plagiarise that? Did you know Ken had written a book? Really? And does this masterpiece have a title? Yes, it's called Weatherfield Yesterday. It's about the history of the area. Non-fiction isn't writing, it's regurgitation. And as for history, it's... The mere distillation of rumour. I suppose you'll be able to tell me who said that as well. If you'll excuse me. Oh, Ken, I'd love to borrow your book. I've been suffering from a touch of insomnia of late. It sounds like just the tonic. Don't you think you were a bit hard on him? Emily. He is a critic and hence my worst enemy. Now, why don't we return to the snug? This delightful evening has given me a raging thirst. Oh, well, I'm, 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 I'm terribly sorry, but nobody round here had even heard of Absinthe. Why am I not surprised? Plebs, one and all. Did he manage to get the cigars, though, and the extra strong lager? Oh, extra. So, uh, let's have one quick snifter with the ladies uh, and then back to the grindstone. And what do I owe you? Oh, the cigars were a lot. Uh, £12.45. What on earth? What was I thinking? A mentor doesn't offer something as vulgar as money. He offers wisdom, and you are going to get it, my friend. Try writing in the nude. It breaks down one's inhibitions. Greg, thanks for doing the ironing. Oh, well, don't thank me too soon. I'm sorry, Sonna. I hadn't had much practice at this. It's all right. I didn't like it much anyway. I know I can't replace her. Do you want a cup of tea, Grandad? Aye. That will be grand. Come on. Deep down, you know it's what you want. It's what you've always wanted. We can be together. What about my family? What about your family? I know things will be messy at the beginning. Messy? You're talking about destroying people's lives. No, it doesn't have to be that way. It, it's called change. It happens all the time. It's the way that we move on. It really is that simple to you, isn't it? 
No, it isn't. I know how complicated things are, but with you, it's simple. I love you. I want to wake up next to you every morning. And I want to wake up to my children. And I don't want to see hatred in their eyes. Well, then we'll wait till they're older. As long as it takes. That way no one really needs to get hurt. And in the meantime? We're going as we were. Oh. No, now listen to me. What, we're going as we were? On that sofa? Oh, Sally, I... Do you really think that I'm about to give everything up for that? You called Lisa nothing. How long before you say I'm nothing? Yeah, but I love you. Ah, oh, you don't know the meaning of the word. I'm just a bit of overtime for you. Well, spare us the righteous indignation, eh? I didn't hear you say no. Well, then, listen very carefully. No! I'm going on. To what? What you call overtime is your life. You've got nothing without me, without us. I'll tell you about us, shall I? It was a business transaction, Ian. I used you, and you used me. So now you're just discarding me, is that it? There's nothing to discard. I know who you are. Yeah. I'm the man you had sex with on this sofa. Exactly. That's all you are. That's all you'll ever be. I've got a family at home that loves me. I can live with what I did. I have to. But for you, this is your life, Ian, this! At least I can walk away. You are trapped here and you can't even see it.